G'day guys, it's Grouse here from Grouse Garage. Here I am with my 2001 X Police VX SS Commodore. Engine and transmission are out. I'm going to rebuild one of those, but I'm a little bit indecisive and I cannot make my mind up. So check out this video and see which way I go. Here we are at part three now of this rebuild series. Part one was all about the history and background of this car, and part two was wrestling with the LS1 and 4L60E to get it out of that engine bay. Here I am separating the two now so that I can make a decision on which one I'm going to rebuild first. Still have not made my mind up at this stage, so let's see what happens. Got a little bit of leakage, unfortunately. As you can see there, bleeding. Also taking a piss over here. So a little bit of stuff to clean up, which I knew would happen. But anyway, that's what you get when you wrestle with a LS1 and 4L60E, which are now separated. It did take a while, but I finally got all that mess cleaned up. Now I'm just putting the engine up on the engine stand, and then I'm going to make a decision, rebuild the engine or rebuild the transmission. Okay guys, engine is on the stand here in Grouse Garage. The transmission is on a makeshift stand over here, which is a couple of milk crates and both of these are ready to strip and rebuild. I just need to decide which one to do first. I've actually got a shitload of parts for the LS1 ready to rebuild. I've also got a full transmission rebuild kit ready to go for the transmission, including a uh, big store converter to go in. I won't be reusing that uh, stocky one there. So I just need to make a decision which one of these to do first. So the only way to decide is to flip a coin. And I'm going to go with heads for the LS1 and I'm going to go with tails for the transmission because that just seems logical, right? So let's flip this coin and see which one we're going to do. You fucker. Oh my God. <laughs> Check out where this coin's gone. <laughs> it's gone underneath the bloody car. Oh, where is it? I can't even see it. Oh, there it is. Let's drag it out and have a look. It's heads. <laughs> uh, after all that, it's heads for the LS1. Which means I'm going to start with stripping this. Now, I'm, I'm cool with that because uh, I've got a nice big cam, bearings, rings. Um, man, I've got a double row timing chain. I've got heaps of stuff to go into this motor. So let's start stripping it.
All right, that's the inlet manifold off. As you can see, it's actually not too bad underneath that. I've seen much, much worse. I've seen guys vacuuming all oh, heaps of shit out of there when inlet manifolds are taken off. So that's not too bad, really. Um, inlet ports look pretty good. But of course, this is all going to get stripped, cleaned, rebuilt. So, you know, the condition of it at this point in time is not too much of a concern. just taken those seals off and there is a bit of black silicon around there so on all of them so that's kind of says to me that this has been off before because I'm not too sure whether the silicon is used from the factory on the inlet seals there so yeah it's been off before who knows why interesting Alrighty guys, it's been about two weeks since I started the teardown of this motor. Uh, had a little break in the middle there, I had to go somewhere really important, which was the Bathurst 1000. So, a little um, break from the motor, I'm back into it now. Let's dive into the garage. I've got um, crap everywhere all over the floor. Um, it is all strategically placed though, I've got to say. Uh, I have been cleaning all these parts in my little baby parts cleaner there and then laying them all out and I've got a whole heap of stuff in the box there that is all clean and ready to store away for when the engine is put back together. Speaking of which, here is the engine and as you can see uh, I've made some good progress on it. I am ready to take the rockers off now and once the rockers are off then those heads will be coming off. That's what I'm going to start on now. I have had to buy a special puller for the harmonic balancer. That should be here in a couple of days. Um, no issues there really other than that, that I wanted the right tool for the job. So I bought one of those. Um, things I've found while stripping the engine, nothing major at all. There is, as I said um, before in this video, there is a bit of uh, evidence of silicon on all of these gaskets and I just don't think that's factory. So someone's been in here before. I don't know why. Um, maybe we'll find out. I hope it hasn't been bored out. Um, well, no, actually, if it has been bored out, um, then it all should be in pretty good condition. But we'll find out very soon. So let's get into it. got 
these heads ready to remove now I've got to take the head bolts out there's a series of head bolts small head ones on the inside here there's another series of head bolts through the center they're the large head ones and then there's also some different bolts here on the outside so I've got to take all these off both sides and then these heads will come off And these outer ones are a bit shorter as you can see there's the two outers and there's the center ones and uh, there's the third bolt as well so when you're doing uh, an LS uh, head gasket and you're taking the heads off this particular year of LS1 used three sized head bolts one two three so make sure, and then the later LS ones had only two size bolts. So when you're ordering head bolts, as I said, these are single use only. When you're ordering these, make sure you know what you're ordering. Guys, we are now at the stage where these heads are ready to come off. So when you're stripping an engine, this is usually the exciting point at, um, during that process where you lift the head off and you see the condition of the cylinder bores. So I'm literally ready to take both of these off. All those bolts are out. So let's not delay it any longer. Let's take these heads off. All right, the first thing that I need to figure out is um, how to lift this up and off the block sensibly without bashing it with a hammer or prying it off with a pry bar or a screwdriver. I'm pretty sure somewhere here there are some studs that these locate on and then get torqued down. So it's a matter of um, lifting them up and away from the block um, with keeping that in mind that there are these locating studs there. Um, so and I don't think I can just pull on this and it will just come off. It's going to need some sort of encouragement, uh, sensible encouragement. Well, I do have a soft hammer here from my engineering days uh, back at Qantas when I was an aircraft engineer. So I'm just going to give it a light tap and see if I can... Ah, see, that's come away now, so I know I can lift that off. So a nice soft hammer, not a hard face hammer soft hammer, a few little taps somewhere um, that's not on a gasket sealing face and uh, that certainly worked to, um, to break that loose. So I'm going to lift that off and we'll have a look inside. And here it is, the head is removed. So, having a look in there for the first time, what are my thoughts? That looks pretty good, to be honest. There's a little bit of carbon there on the valves. The colour of the valves is actually pretty good, if you can see that there on camera. Um, it's a nice brown colour, which indicates a good mixture. Um, not too much carbon to clean off. So, initial thoughts, not too bad. Let's take a look at the bores now. That's the exciting part. All right, I've got my GoPro camera here, brand new GoPro too. So let's go across and inspect each cylinder. And I wonder if we can get the GoPro in there to see uh, what the condition of those bores are like. First inspection, need a torch, might just grab a torch and we'll have a much better closer look. All right, I've got the torch now. And let's have a look there, a little bit glazed. Uh, interesting though, I can see some cross hatch, cross hash pattern in the cylinder bore, which indicates condition is good. Yeah, definitely some cross hatch still there from when they were, uh, when the car was, um, when the engine was built. 
So my initial thoughts on those are really good. Really, really good. And you know, a little bit of carbon on the pistons, but again, it's not too bad, not too much. So yes, I am, oh, the water jackets are certainly, um, <laughs> look at all that shit in there. Oh, that's solid too. All that shit in the, look at all that shit in the water jackets there. Oh, that's um, quite solid as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to need some work on this block. Might even have to send it away for a hot dip. Um, yes, in fact, I think I will do that just to be safe, which means I'm going to have to strip the pistons out and then I'm going to have to give it a hone and a re-ring. So, you know, the build just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Okay, the last thing I want to do here today before pumping out this video is to pull this harmonic balancer. Now, I had a really hard time getting that bolt out. Uh, in the end, it was a combination of heat and, and, um, and force, basically. Uh, and I had to support the motor um, on the stand. And uh, in the end, we got there anyway. So now I've got myself a recommended GM uh, harmonic balancer puller. I didn't want to, I've got another one there, just a standard gear puller. I didn't want to use it on there. Uh, and bodge it up. I figured um, for 50 bucks I'll just go and buy the one that is made for this job. And I'm just going to unbox that here now. So I haven't even had a look at it yet. Um, but I do know that it is the right one for the job. So let's take a look at this. Nope, that is coming off fairly easily. I can see in the back there how far. So um, no heat, nothing other than the special tool and a bit of, bit of grunt. Oh man, that's heavy. Okay, and that's off. <laughs> Well guys, that is going to be a wrap for this video. As you can see, I've got the engine on the stand here. Really only just a top end strip at this stage. I've still got to flip it over and uh, do the bottom end of that. That will be coming up very soon on this channel. Back here on the workbench, here's the cylinder heads off that motor. Now they have cleaned up really, really well. So good in fact, I'm going to put out a special video on how I clean aluminium cylinder heads and the products that I use. So make sure you subscribe so you can check that one out. Big thanks to all the subscribers that have jumped on board recently. Plenty more content coming out for this engine build, for that transmission build, and let's not forget the car itself back there. So until next time, thanks for watching. Alrighty guys, as you can see, the LS1 is sitting nicely on its stand. The 4L6... What did I say? Did I say LS1?